Hi, guys and gals. This is Al Smith. Today, we're going to talk about the responder splinters. Okay, and there's two parts. This lesson and the next lesson uh, are really part of the standard American bidding systems and really aren't conventions. But uh, there are things that many people, the intermediate pay player, do not incorporate into their game. Okay, now what's really critical about learning how to use this, the splinters and reverses, is that every convention that you're going to ever learn is based upon the assumption that you're using splinters and, 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 and reverses. And uh, let's see, we've got, I'm, I'm going to come up here. Again. Okay, let's see, ask to unmute. I'm going to ask Trish to unmute. Yes, there are Linda Trish, Trisha and Yates. somebody named you have a Wilder. Question? Yes, someone by the name of Linda and someone by the name of Wilder do not have their mute on, and we can't hear you talking because they're being rude. You can now send nonverbal feedback. Yes, slow down, etc. From reactions on the toolbar. Can you just mute right. everybody? Let me try this. All right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just continue. Hopefully everybody can hear me and we will continue down this path. All right, so let's get started. Okay, what is the responder splitter? The, 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 uh, the responder splinter is a very explicit bid. Okay, it shows a nine plus card trump suit fit. Now, this is critical. It always shows nine plus cards in this in the trump suit between you and your partner. That becomes the key to determine one of the keys of determining when you can make the splinter bid. Okay, and it also shows shortness a singleton or a void in the bid suit. And now here's the really critical part about a splinter is a limited bid. It shows exactly between 11 and 14 distribution points. And notice I said distribution points. So you as the responder, your partner opens one heart, you've got uh, uh, four hearts. Okay, you have at least nine hearts between you. Okay, so that would qualify you for a, a potentially a splinter. You've got a, a singleton in spades. And when you add up your distribution points, counting for your, your voids, singletons, and doubletons, you've got between 11 and 14 points. The reason that this is so important is that you don't want to use a splinter with fewer points or with more points. Because you've got more points, you want to tell your partner that and you want the potential exploring slam. So this says to Please your partner do it again. Please that it's everyone forcing to the four level. It's going to These force the bidding to the four Please level and messages. it invites the oh, opener to open. investigate Please. slam with the right values, okay? So your, your partner opens in first or second seats. You got a hand that qualifies for a splinter. You make a splinter bid. Now your partner, they've got a really big hand can now investigate slam because they know they've got at least nine plus cards in the Trump suit and you've got 11 to 14 distribution points. So it gives them the basis to look if and only if they think they have the potential for slam. Otherwise they're going to bid game. Okay, uh, and the responder may use the, the splinter bid after your partner opens in any seat. Okay, if your partner's a past hand, you know, in third or fourth seat and opens, you've already passed, you've limited your hand, okay? So you couldn't open, but once they bid, you may have 11 to 14 point distribution points and uh, uh, four, plus four or more cards in their suit. And splinters can also be used after the opponent interferes. Okay, splinters are artificial bids and must be alerted. Okay, and this applies to all splinters. Okay, 
not just the uh, the responder splinters, but to all splinters. These are artificial bids. You're not really bidding a suit, a natural suit, but you're telling your partner that, hey, I've got shortness in this suit, a singleton or a void. All right, now let's take a look at this again. The responder splinter shows four plus cards in the Trump suit, okay, four plus. Okay, show shortness, a singleton or a void in the bid suit and a limit bid of 11 to 14 distribution point. Okay, the responder bids a splinter by using a double jump shift. Okay, now let's take a look at the structure of this. We've got one heart passed by the opponent and three spades. Okay, you've got one spade, two spades is called a jump shift and three spades is a double jump shift. So three spades is an artificial bid. It jumps to the three level or the four level if, uh, if, if, if it's one of the other suits. And it, that is how you recognize a splinter bid, okay? That double jump shift is not used for anything else in the standard bidding system. It's used to show the splinter bid. Okay, and this is done by the responder. If, for example, here we have one heart and we want a splinter in club showing we've got a singleton uh, club or avoidant clubs, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a double jump shift. So we're going to bypass two clubs, three clubs, we're going to bid four clubs. Okay, you can see that all of these are game forcing bids. It says, hey, partner, I've got 11 to 14 points and four plus cards in your suit. We're going to game. You decide whether you think we have the potential to explore slam. So it puts the captain's hat back on the opening bidder. Now, here's just another example with respect to diamonds. So you can see the, 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 the symmetry of the bid, okay? Now, the splinter after interference, it works in exactly the same way, okay? We basically just ignore the interfering bid. In this example here, we've got one heart, uh, and, and, and then the opponent, the goal of that opponent bids two clubs and you bid four clubs. But that says you've got four plus hearts, you've got 11 to 14 points and you've got a single turn avoid in clubs, which can be very, very informative to your partner. Another example here is with respect to one heart, one spade, four spades. Now let me point this out. Four spades is, a if you're going to use this as a splinter, is a uh, is a partnership agreement. I actually don't recommend this, but I want to mention it because some people do. Okay, uh, and the reason that this comes up is that one heart, one spade is used for what's called a Western qubit. All right, so that's uh, I won't go into what the Western qubit is, but that's what that 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 one spade, three spades is used used for after after interference. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Okay, and let's look at this first hand here, is that uh, our partner opened one heart, the opponent passed. Now, let's just look at this. We've got a singleton spade. We've got four hearts, four diamonds and four clubs. All right, now a splinter doesn't say anything about the quality of support. It only says quantity of support. So we've got four hearts, one, two, three, four, not real good ones, but we got four of them. So now because our partner's only gonna open one heart with five plus hearts, we know we've got nine plus. Okay, we've got that singleton spade and we count the points, we've got four, eight, 10, and we get three for our singleton. We've got 13 distribution points. That falls into the range of 11 to 14. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bid three spades. Now, our, our partner, the opener is going to decide whether they want to sign off in four hearts or explore slam. And they can explore slam by bidding anything but four hearts, okay? They can start doing control Q bidding and so forth. Let's take a look at this second example here. Okay, here partner opened one spade. Okay, we've got five spades and we've got seven high card points, okay? And we've got five for our void. So we've got 12 distribution points. Now notice that we can have five spades. We can have six spades. We can have seven spades, okay? And we can still use the splinter, okay? What it's promising is four plus cards in the major suit because a major suit opening promises five. 
Okay, so we've got, we now know we've got 10 spades between us. Okay, and we've got 12 plus distribution points. So we're going to, we're going to bid three hearts as the splinter bid showing a singleton or void in, in hearts. Let's take a look at this next example here. Let me check your volume. Okay, in this one, uh, our partner yeah. opens one heart. And what do we have? Uh, let's see if I move this so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, and uh, we've got, again, we've got kind of the same shape as example number one, but we've only got six points plus three is nine. So we, we do have the four hearts. So we've got a singleton I in what, the spades, we can, but yeah. oh, we okay. don't have enough points. You need to have 11 to 14 oh, Ellie, so you can hear us so, now? What are we going to do? We're two weeks, so we're going to bid two hearts. Now, some of you may be playing Bergen, okay? I'm not gonna talk about the, the details of that convention, but you might be able to show the, this, this particular hand by making a Bergen bid, because you've got nine distribution points and you've got four card support, okay? But the important thing to note here, the hand is too weak to make a, a splinter bid because, when you make that splinter bid, you're forcing the bidding to the four level, to the game level, and you need to have enough points in order to do that. Let's look at the next example here. Here we've got uh, one heart pass, and now we've got the four hearts also. We've got a void in spades, really nice. Okay, now we've got 16 distribution points. That's too strong to make a splinter bid. Okay, so. This is like uh, Goldilocks and the three bears. These two up here are just right. This one is too cold, this one is too hot. Okay, so because what we wanna be able to do is communicate using another bid, probably the Jacoby two no Trump in this particular situation, telling our partner we've got a stronger hand and giving our partner more encouragement in terms of potentially exploring slam. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, 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 this in particular with respect to each one of the suits that our partner might open. We've been talking about the major suits. Now, what happens if our partner opens one diamond? Okay, now the one diamond open, if you're playing basic standard American, the partner may have three diamonds, but 96% of the time you're going to have four plus diamonds. If you're playing a short club, 100% of the time is going to show four plus diamonds, All right? Now, the splinter, responder splinter in this particular case shows five plus. Now, in the previous one, we we're talking about the majors, it showed four plus. Why does it require five plus if the opener bid one diamond? Well, because it's only promising four. And to do a splinter bid, you need to be able to guarantee that between you and your partner, you have nine plus cards in this suit. All right, that's the key. So with diamonds, you have to have at least five plus. Okay, now again, it promises shortness, uh, a singleton or void in the bid suit, and it shows the same limit. So the variable in the, between the, the suits is the number of cards required to make the splinter bid. Okay, responder bids the splinter by making a double jump shoot suit in in the, the, the short suit. Again, here in this example here, we got one diamond, our partner opened one diamond, and we are going to bid three hearts, three spades, or four clubs if to show a splinter bid in one of these three suits. Okay, so you can see that's again a double jump. One heart, two hearts, three hearts is a double jump. Three spades is a double jump. Four clubs is a double jump. Again, we're going to be forcing our partner to the four level. Okay, so it's, that's why it's really critical that we have the required number of points in the range of 11 to 14. Okay, yes, there are splinters after interference. Okay, uh, don't let those pesky opponents get in your way. So uh, just be aware that you can make the splinter after interference and it works exactly the same way. Okay, let's take a look at an example here with respect to one diamond. Okay, our partner opens one diamond. Okay, we've got what? We've got four, eight, 10 a high card points. We've got a singleton spade. Okay, so we've got 
13 distribution points. No, we've got five diamonds. Okay, our partner is only promising us four plus. So even if you're playing standard American, only promising three, we're still going to assume they have four because they're going to have four 96% of the time. So we've got five diamonds, we've got a singleton spade, and we've got 13 distrib point, distribution points, which puts us in the, the splinter range. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tell our partner that we have five plus diamonds and 11 to 14 points in a single turn or avoid and clubs by bidding three spades. Now notice somebody might say, well, what about no Trump? Well, if you've got a 10 card Trump suit or a nine card Trump suit and you've got an unbalanced hand, you don't want to be in no Trump, all right? Okay, and the reason you don't want to be a no trump is because you need to have communication between the two hands if you're going to play no trump. And many times, if you've got an unbalanced hand, you don't have that communication. Let's look at the second example here. Okay, and this one, our partner opened one diamond. Look at this, we've got five diamonds again. So we've got, we satisfied the first criterion. Okay, we've got a void in hearts. We've got 12 distribution points, okay? And we've got four spades. So what are we going to do here? We're not going to bid a splinter. Why aren't we going to bid a splinter? Because we've got four spades and we want to give priority over finding a fit in the major suit over setting the contract in a minor suit. So what we're going to do is we're going to bid one spade, which is because it's a new suit by the responder is forcing. We'll come back later and tell our partner about the, 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 the fit in diamonds, because we know that we've got nine diamonds between us. But the important thing to note here is the finding a fit in the major suit takes priority over finding, uh, of showing a certain fit in the minor suit. We're going to get to it. You'll get to be able to show your diamonds later if your partner doesn't have spades. If he's got four spades, he's going to bid two spades or he's going to bid jump to three spades and you're going to be able to find a major suit game instead of a potential minor suit game. Let's take a look at example number three. In this one, our partner opens one diamond. Okay, we've got five diamonds to get. So with five plus four, that's nine. Good deal, we've got a single to spade. That's box number two checked, but we only have nine distribution points. We're not strong enough to bid a splinter. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to bid two diamonds. Now, if you're playing inverted miners, you've got other bids available to you. But in this particular case, if you're playing standard American without any conventions at this particular point in time, you're just gonna bid two diamonds. Okay, let's look at example four. Okay, in this one, uh, our partner opens one diamond. Wow, we've got five diamonds again. We've got a void in space. We've got 16. Okay, we're too strong. Back to Goldilocks and the three bears. These two are just, this one's just right. This one's too hot. This one's too cold. And this one's out lost in the forest somewhere. So we want to be able to properly uh, describe our hand. Okay, so this one is where we want to give priority for showing the fit in the major. Okay, and in this one, we want, we're too strong to do a splinter, but also note that we've got four hearts. We're actually going to bid one heart in response to our partners open of one diamond. Why? Because we've got four. Okay, now when you bid one heart, does it promise anything about quality? No. It only promises quantity. So you tell your partner you've got four plus hearts. And what you're looking for is that major suit fit. Okay, so we're going to bid one heart. So this note that this is really important about uh, 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 potential using splinter, using splinter bids against the minor suit opening is you want to make sure you, ex you explore every opportunity you have to find a major suit. All right, let's look at the club. Now, one club show only guarantees three plus clubs. Now, it's uh, a lot of times you'll have more, but it only guarantees three, and many times you'll have three. Now, if you're using a short club, 96% of the time you'll have at least three, but 4% of the time you only have two. 
So that raises an interesting question with respect to splinter bits. All right, so in response to your partner's one club open, because you, have, you don't have the same level of confidence that your prob partner has at least four, you need to have six plus cards in the trump suit. Doesn't happen very often, but every once in a while it does. And you wanna have this tool in your toolbox. <laughs> Okay, but to make a splinter after your partner opens one club, you need to have six plus cards in suit. It still requires the same requirements in terms of having shortness in the bid suit, 11 to 14 points, still has the double jump shift. Everything is pretty much the same. Okay, and yes, you can do splinters after interference and it works exactly like the diamonds. Okay, now, okay. Now, uh, the responder can splinter. Now that's, that's the splinter. We've talked about splinters after the opener first bid. Now let's talk about splinters a little bit after the opener second bid. Okay, it depends on how many partner, how many cards opener second bid guarantees. Okay, let's look at that for example. If, if your partner's Second bid guarantees six plus cards in the suit. You only need three plus cards to, 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 to splitter. For example, let's assume your partner opens one heart and you bid one spade and they bid two hearts. Well, by bidding two hearts, they're, 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 they're saying they don't have, they have six plus cards in that suit. Okay, if they've got six plus cards, now if you've got three plus cards in the uh, the opener's uh, suit, you can splinter, okay? So keep that in mind. Again, it comes back to being able to guarantee having nine plus cards in the suit. Here's an example. One heart, one spade, two hearts, okay? If you've got a, a, a singleton or a void in clubs or diamonds and, and, and three hearts, you can splinter, assuming you've got 11 to 14 distribution points. Okay. Everything holds the same. The only thing that changes here is that uh, your the number of cards required to make the splinter bid changes because their partner has rebid the suit. Now let's look at the second example. We've got one club, one heart, three clubs. What does three clubs typically mean? Three clubs means that your partner has six plus clubs and a solid or semi-solid suit. So originally in clubs to do a splinter, you needed to have uh, 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 six plus cards. Now, because your partner, you know your partner has six, you only need three. Now, you really don't have a splinter bit available here, but I wanted to, to, to point this out because you may then later on show shortness by using control bits. Okay, now uh, if the if the the second uh, if the, if it, if the you only you need four plus cards if the, if the bid guarantees five plus uh, shows only five. For example, you've got one heart, two diamonds, and you may have a reason for bidding di two diamonds, even though that you've got four plus cards and your partner bids two hearts here. Okay, they're only guaranteeing five. Okay, if you've got four, you can actually do a splinter. Okay, so let's take a come down here, and it shows the the the, the same general structure in 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 the bidding sequence to to show the splinter. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of these in detail. All right, let's take a look at a couple of examples here and say should the responder splinter. Okay, in this first one, the bidding has bid the part, your partner opened one heart, you bid one spade, you've got four, five of them, nice hand, you've got four, eight, 10, 11 length points. Okay, you also have, you can count distribution, you got 13 distribution points. Instead of immediately showing support for hearts, hey, you want to tell your partner, hey, I've got something nice in spades. So you bid a spade and your partner comes back and bids two hearts. Notice that if they didn't have six hearts, they'd bid one no trump or they'd bid a second suit. Okay, so, and if they had four spades to begin with, they would have supported your spades. So you know that they have six cards. 
Okay, six plus cards in, that, in, in hearts. And you've got three, so that's nine. So we've got six plus three is nine. We've got a singleton diamond here. We've got 13 distribution points. It's in the range of 11 to 14. Cool. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a splinter bid. Okay. We're going to bid four diamonds. Now notice this isn't a, this isn't a double jump shift, but it's a jump to the four level. Okay. And the reason, you know, you use that jump to the four level to show a weaker hand. If you were stronger, you would bid slower. Let's take a look at example number two. We have pretty much the same situation here. We've got one club, pass, one diamond, and then your partner bids two clubs. Guess what? Your partner has just clarified their hand saying they've got five plus clubs. Look at what you've got. You've got four clubs. If you know your partner's got five plus, you know you've got nine plus between you. Okay, and you've got four, eight. You've got five for the void. You've got 13 to 15 distribution points, depending on how you want to count it. Now, okay, I'm going to count it as 13. So you can come back now and you can uh, bid four spades to show that you have a singleton or a void in spades, okay? This is a splinter, okay? And what this says is, hey, we're going to game in a minor suit. And I wanna give you enough information so that you can determine Mr. Opener or Mrs. Opener, uh, whether you wanna explore slam or not. So it says, hey, I've got a singleton or a void. Now, obviously it's much better if you've got a void because it, tell, it kind of tells your partner more information, but, Okay, uh, that uh, you can get that it gives you the capability of saying we're going to game and I've got an interesting hand. And if you want to, let's explore slam. Let's look at the third example here. Let's say move this up. Okay, and this one here we partner opens one heart. We've got two, four, six, seven spades. Okay. And we've got three hearts and the bidding went one spade, but came back and bid two hearts. We know he's got six hearts now, okay? We've got those seven spades though. We go, oh, we wanna, we, wanna, we wanna be in our spades. Look at all those spades. But what do you know? You know your partner's got six plus hearts. How many do you got? You got three. How many do you got between you? You've got nine. So between you, you've got nine plus hearts. So you want to be in hearts. It doesn't matter whether you've got seven spades. Maybe you can use those spades later to make a lot more. Okay, you've got a singleton diamond. which have got eight distribution points. So you're not strong enough to bid a splinter. Okay, you're too weak to bid a splinter here. You don't have enough points to force your partner to go to gain. So what are you going to do? You're going to bid three hearts to invite gain. Okay, that's how your partner is going to know that uh, you're, you're, you've got limited strength. It's up to the opener to decide whether you're going to game or not. Okay, now let's look at this last one here. We've got one club, uh, the partner opened a club. You've got a, you bid a diamond. Well, actually you wouldn't bid it. Well, yeah, you, you would bid a diamond with this hand. Now, uh, we'll, get to, we'll get back to this. This is kind of a lead into next week. Well, it's actually, yeah, not a lead in next week, it's, but it's, it's, a, it's a lead into uh, reverses. Okay, we've got one diamond and your partner bids three clubs. Now, what do you know? Well, your partner just jumped to three clubs. Says, I've got 16 plus, probably 16 to 18 points. Length points, I've got uh, semi-solid or solid clubs, okay? And I've got six plus of those, 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 those guys. And you've got four, okay? Now, you've got, he's got six plus, you've got four plus, guess what? You know you've got 10 clubs, okay? So uh, the, uh, you know that you're going to want to be in diamonds. Now you might come back and say, why didn't you bid one heart out? Well, it's because, I was planning on doing a responder reverse. I'm strong enough to do a reverse to tell my partner I've got five plus diamonds, four plus hearts, and 12 plus points. So that's where the reverses come into play. Okay, so, but because of the bidding, we're not going to use the reverse. We're going to tell our partner that we have got at least, we know now that we've got at least 33 total, 33 plus total points, and we need to be in slam somewhere. 
So we're going to figure out how to bid to explore SLAM. That's a different topic, but this is kind of a waving a flag saying uh, we're going to SLAM. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to bid three hearts now, showing a new suit. Now, when the responder bids a new suit, it's forcing. Okay, you're going to bid three hearts. It also says, hey, partner, I got something in hearts. Okay, we're not going to use a splinter here. We're going to go slow because we know we've got a really strong hand and we want to maximize the number of bids that, we've got, that we, we make in order to describe our hand. Okay, now... All right, I'm going to, uh, we're going to do questions and answers in a minute. Now, this thing here is, uh, uh, I've, I've given this before and we had attached to it an actual play of the hands using shark bridge. Okay, but we're not going to do that. Okay, but these next several pages are the hands that are in that particular lessons that we played. And you can, I, I left these in here so that you can use these as a mechanism to uh, uh, actually uh, you know, uh, look at the, the bidding and, and determine how you would play the hand. And here's my contact information. If you see something in here that's wrong uh, or needs to be corrected or have comments, send me an email. If you feel like it, give me a call. It's all right with me. Okay, let me get out of this. Let's come back here and we're gonna stop sharing. Okay, and we're going to see uh, if anybody, let's see, let's see, uh, we'll see if we can get, uh, make sure my, uh, I, I can hear people. Uh, Netgear, okay, no, that's the wrong thing. Okay, where's my sound, my sound here? Yeah, yeah, it's on. All right, uh, let me open up the floor to, to, to questions. Anybody got any questions? If so, raise your hands there. Okay, Jackie, uh, I'll ask you to unmute. Let me turn off the, uh, the recording. Let's see, where, how do I do that? Uh, more. Stop recording. All right.